What's poppin' everybody? So recently I was just looking through a bunch of my old videos and one of those I was looking through was the a one like a year ago called Rappers Who Changed Hip Hop Forever and I was just looking through the comments of that and there was a lot of people talking about uh, I miss this rapper, I miss that rapper so I figured, hey, why not make a part two? So here we are today. Enjoy. I wanna be the one to pressure everybody when I see that I'm coming to claim it on the one of the MCs Could have had it earlier, but I'm not an early bird Late to my job, almost every day of the week And I wanna do what I'm purpose so they can fire me Never again will I want anybody to hire me You know that I gotta go hunt up before I tell you Bring it, people wanna hate in the flow Whenever but anything is bitch, you keep Cuddy did a lot more for the game than people give him credit for. For one thing, Cuddy made it acceptable to be emotionally expressive in rap music. He was the first big rapper that put his foot down and said, you know what? It's okay to be sad. It's okay for you to express your feelings. Don't suppress them. And I can't stress enough how beneficial that was for black youth to see a cool young black rapper say stuff like that because mental health, it's a pretty taboo thing in the black community and it's great that Cuddy was and still is a great figure for those type of young black kids and all kids for that matter. He was this beacon of light to all the loners and outcasts that happened to like hip-hop. He was basically the Kurt Cobain of rap. Simply put, we can thank Cuddy for bringing mental health awareness to hip-hop and that spread a massive wave of influence. If you don't believe me, ask hip-hop itself. Rappers like Kyle, Juice World, Travis Scott, Jaden Smith, ASAP Rocky, and many others have said that Cuddy was, and still is, a big influence to them. We also can't forget how Cuddy's style changed the sound of hip-hop either. In 2008, Cuddy dropped his first mixtape, A Kid Named Cuddy, which contained a style of hip-hop that nobody had ever heard. Well, long story short, Kanye heard it and loved it. He had Cuddy flown to Hawaii to help him work on 808s and Heartbreak, and hip-hop has never looked back. Both projects mixed emotional lyricism, hypnotic melodies, and spacey yet still hard-hitting beats together, and the rap game was forever changed. LL Cool J is on here for two reasons. The first one is that he was the first teenage rapper to achieve commercial success. He was 16 when he dropped his first single, I Need a Beat, and 17 when his first album, Radio, came out, which both charted fairly high. Now that doesn't mean if LL Cool J didn't do it, then there would never ever be a teenage rapper, but he was the first, so we gotta give him credit for that. The second reason he's on this list is because he made the song, I Need Love, which is considered the first love song in rap history, so shout out to Double L for having two of the biggest firsts in the game. Bone Thugs are on this list because when they first blew up, they sounded way different than everybody else. Easy e recognized this and signed them after hearing them backstage at one of his shows. They mixed double time fast flows with catchy melodies and harmonies while still having good lyrics, but it was kind of hard to hear them at times, which is why a lot of people credit them for starting mumble rap. Still not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But back when they first blew up in 1994 after the release of their first album, Creepin' on a Come Up, they were one of the few acts in hip-hop that sung in their music, which is funny because in today's era, it seems like you need a catchy melody in order for your song to blow up. Now, I can't prove that that is because of Bone Thugs, but there's no denying that they are a big reason why a lot of rappers that came after them started singing in their music too. MC Light was the first commercially successful female rapper, and she made people take female rappers seriously. Now obviously she's not the first girl to ever rap, but she was the first to actually go on and have a successful solo career. Her debut album, Light as Rock, is actually the first ever solo rap album released by a female, and it achieved commercial and critical success. I know a lot of you are probably really confused right now, but Riff Rap actually did change the game by creating meme rap. From my research, he seems to be the first rapper to make it big by making satirical and intentionally goofy and outlandish raps. He sparked the wave of rappers like Ugly God, Big Shaq, and Young Gravy, just to name a few. <laughs> Not really sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but he did do it first, so I gotta give him credit for changing the game. And you could also argue he was ahead of his time by being one of the first to rock crazy colorful hairstyles and having wild, almost meaningless tattoos, which, again, is something I'm not really sure is a good or bad thing. I feel like Tyler does not get as much credit as he deserves. He brought an entirely new sound and fashion style to hip hop. His old music had synth and bass heavy beats that were something that no other mainstream rapper had been using and mixing those with his wild lyrics and deep ass voice made him sound different than everybody else. 
His new music style, however, takes a different approach and is more lighthearted and vibey. But regardless of what style his music is at the moment, he has always remained that icon for millions of kids who felt like they didn't belong, and I think that's enough for him to land a spot on this list, but there is more. Let's not forget to mention the amount of talent he has brought to the table. He gave great artists like Frank Ocean, Earl Sweatshirt, Kali Uchis, and Rex Orange County the spotlight they deserve, and I think people need to recognize Tyler more for this. Now we've come down to his fashion, which is arguably what he's most known for. And it's probably easier for me to just show you instead of telling you so. Here you go. I have not seen any other rapper dressed like this, and I actually really like it. I'm a person who enjoys a lot of color, so I appreciate the crazy color schemes that Tyler is able to pull off in his outfits. His style is so popular and so iconic that the success of Golf should tell you all you really need to know about how iconic his fashion really is. Like I ain't make a quarter million off of socks, nigga. Before Atlanta was the hip hop powerhouse that it is today, it just had Andre 3000 and Big Boy. They put Atlanta on the map. And not only that, they were one of the most successful acts not only in hip hop but music in general. Their album Speaker Box The Love Below went diamond. Diamonds, people. And obviously being as successful and talented as they were, they were very influential to a lot of newer rappers. Mix Andre's skill for catchy melodies and lyrics as well as his crazy fashion with Big Boy's unique delivery and flow and you got a truly iconic duo. What has NWA not done? They are one of the few artists that can truly say they changed music. You know what? NWA has done so much that it could really be its own video. There's just that much to talk about. So if you're one of the few people that don't know what they've done, <laughs> just go watch Straight Outta Compton because you're living under a rock. Now, by putting De La Soul and A Tribe Called Quest in the same spot, I'm not saying their music sounded identical, but both groups' music changed the game in the same way at around the same time, so I felt it made sense to put them in the same spot. In an era of hip-hop where gangster rap was the most popular subgenre, we had these two groups break into the mainstream with a music style that was the opposite of that, jazz rap. Their style completely flipped the game on its head. Both groups traded lyrics about killing and drugs for lyrics about love and having fun. Both groups traded hard-hitting beats for more light-hearted ones filled with soulful samples. And it's kind of hard to explain, but it seemed like they would almost let the sample take the lead of a song, and they would write the song around the sample itself, if that makes sense. And it's just, it's no secret that they changed the way that rappers use samples, plain and simple. Shoddy Red is definitely the least known rapper on this list, but he had one of the biggest impacts. He created trap music. Most people think either GZ, TI, or Gucci Mane invented it, but that's just not the case. They definitely made it popular though, but if we're talking about the originator, then that crown's gotta go to Shoddy Red. Chief Keef did a lot for a teenage rapper. He may be 23 right now, but he blew up at such a young age it feels like he's 30. It just blows my mind that he dropped Don't Like when he was 17. That's just wild to me. But anyways, hip hop can thank Chief Keef for popularizing drill music and that spread like wildfire because once he blew up it sounded like everybody and their mom was a Chief Keef wannabe. Busta Rhymes is honored because he made fast rap popular. Simple as that. On to the next rapper. Lil Wayne is the punchline god. He literally turned them into an art form. He's brought us some of the most iconic and clever rap lyrics ever, and when it's all said and done, I think he should be considered a top 5 lyricist. He's also had one of the biggest influences rap has ever seen. I mean, just look at the amount of talent he introduced us to. He brought us some of the game's biggest stars in Drake, Nicki Minaj, and Tyga, and whether you like them or not, you can't deny numbers. Nas is the peak of lyricism. If Rakim sparked great lyricism in rap, then Nas is the full-on flame. Before Nas, everybody agreed that Rakim was the best lyricist ever. That was until Illmatic dropped in. Just like that, lyricism got evolved by some 17-year-old kid. It's just crazy. Not only did Nas change the game in terms of lyricism, but he also had one of the biggest impacts on hip-hop in terms of influence. He inspired many of the game's best ever. Dudes like Jay-Z, Tupac, Biggie, Lil Wayne, Eminem. It's just too many to count. Alright y'all, that is all I got for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe if you're new. Make sure to follow my Twitter and Instagram in the description. And as always, this has been Isaiah the Player, and I'm gone. You right there. How are you? 
I'm gonna show you the M9 pistol. 1.5 jewel. Not something to play around with. I get this gun for a serious matter. I I can shoot animals. Shh, keep it on the DF. DF. Mom! Get me some cornflakes!